Hey, man, when's the big unveiling, huh? Look, I gotta go to work in a couple hours, you know. Hey, man, piss off. Ricky, Yo. get this lame out of your yard. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Three Geeks Flicks. Joining me as always is the muse Justin <sighs> Kyle. Say hello everyone Justin. Hello everyone. Ah uh, yes and of course I am the tech Mitchell Wright. We're back a little something different something we haven't done in a while. We've got another clutch list here for you. Now to explain a clutch I'm going to make Justin again do that so you go <sighs> right ahead. Okay, a uh, a clutch film is like you're, <clears throat> it's like you're turning on the channel, you're you're channel surfing, and then you see a movie. Maybe you haven't watched it, maybe like a year or two, and it's always just a really dependable, fun, good watch. It's like you're walking down the street and you found mm -hmm. a five dollar bill on the ground. It's mm -hmm. it's not going to you know change your day, but it's like oh yeah, sure, here I'll take it, might as well, right? I can always look to you for a great analogy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> That's the best I can do right now. That was man. well done. That was well done. It's going to be an interesting episode, folks. The muse is tired. These are always great. <sighs> All right. All right. Well, as I always do, I look to you, good muse, and say, Justin, give it to me. What you got? So the first film on my clutch list for tonight, that would be November the 11th, 2016, mm -hmm. is The 13th Warrior. Ah, yes, sir. Little Eaters of the Dead. Yeah, it's a, it's a solid film. It was directed by Michael Crichton. I think this was his directing debut. He's, he's the author. He wrote the book as yes. well. Yes, Writer writer of uh, a lot of classic films, you know, Jurassic Park, whatnot. Indeed. Um, you know, and I've I, I've been on record as saying uh, I've been on record like I'm published in this or something. But uh, <laughs> I've said I've said before that this is the most, <clears throat> in my opinion, one of the most realistic night movies I've ever seen in my life. So, and and I don't mean necessarily like the mission they went on. I mean the everything else. So like that's essentially what knights did back then, and they went they went on missions. They were kind of like the uh, you know the police, I guess, if you will, except they did it with swords. And in this case, it was it was very gritty, very well done. I think this movie holds up tremendously, considering yes. that it was done, you know, 18 years ago. Oh, absolutely. Very, very gritty, very brutal. Uh, a lot of good character development. Um, it's a solid film. It's a solid film. I got to give it, I'll give it a solid eight. Oh, I, I'd agree. I'd maybe even give it an 8.5. I had that baby on VHS back in college. Yes, sir. Yep, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good movie. Good movie. Thank you. Um, my first film is a uh, 2004 Guillermo del Toro movie uh, starring Ron Perlman, John Hurt, um, Doug Jones, Jeffrey Tambor, uh, Carl Roden, and Selma Blair. Yep. H Hellboy. Now... That's a Every, great film, bro. It That's is. Great. Everybody still to this day prays that Guillermo and uh, Ron will still get together for a Hellboy 3. Uh, I mean, Ron is Hellboy, will always be Hellboy. If they try to right. reboot it, they're just going to they're gonna shoot themselves in the foot, to be quite honest, because right. nobody's going to be able to pull it off like him. Uh, right. I agree. Good, good kind of dark anti-hero movie. Um not uh not amazing cgi but it holds up uh fun story um funny to that fact good action yep. uh, decent superhero premise uh one of those movies that it can be on any channel i'm flipping through i'm like oh hey hellboy's on okay or you know maybe i'm doing something in the background oh hell i'll stick hellboy on why not so right. you know uh, uh, the epitome of a clutch Absolutely. 
And when did when did that? Do you remember what year that movie came out? It was two thousand four. Two thousand four. Now I remember that movie had a great trailer. If you remember the trailer. Oh yeah. In fact, the the overall marketing when that movie came out, I remember it vividly. That marketing was everywhere. Uh, that that could be a movie of the year contender, if I remember correctly. It could be, and I mean, it, it, it's an enjoyable movie, man. I mean, it had a good cast, good group, right? right. You know, kind of, kind of, you know, a odd couple like it. So, yeah, absolutely, Hellboy. So, what would you, what would you, what did you rate it again? It was a. It's an eight point five to an eight. You know, it falls in between. I I flip back and forth on that number right now, but somewhere in there. Right, I agree. I agree. That's a fun. That's a fun film, man. Through and through. At the time when you said the CGI doesn't hold up, it doesn't hold up today, just because you know it's been over a decade later. But at the time, it was really, really good. It, it was, was good. really good. It, it was time. good. It was good. Um, you know, the the only thing that I kind of felt like they could have put a little more effort into was the um, uh, the Pit Lords, Dark Lords, Lords of the Abyss. You know, the Hell Lords. Right. Uh, other than looking like big, many-eyed slugs with tentacles. Right. But they were still they were still cool in there, right? That's that's the signature of Gilmo, man. He loves those practical costumes, so you mm-hmm. got to give him that. That's mm-hmm. their signature. And I do like all the costumes. I have to definitely give it a, a on that. Right. The makeup, the makeup of Hellboy was was awesome, uh, for sure. Absolutely. So, okay, my next film is the. Highly underrated, in my opinion, 2006 release of a film called Apocalypto by Mel Gibson. Yes, sir. So, I I love this movie. I really love this movie. Uh, and we we're just talking about practical effects. This movie, you know, could could be. A, I'm not sure if it did win uh, for practical effects or costume design. It, it, it. I know it was nominated at the Oscars that year, deservingly so. I mean, the the time they put into building the sets. You know the Mayan temples uh, when they had the jade jewelry all over, uh, mm-hmm. the handmade weapons, the locations. They were deep in the Mexican jungle. I mean, for real, it's it's a two-hour chase movie, Mad Max on foot, essentially in the Mayan. Nice. So, if you will. Nice. so you know the filmmaking. Regardless of what you think about Mel Gibson and his and his personal you know demons that he's had. If you can separate the art from the artist, which is a shame that most people can't do that these days, he is a phenomenal filmmaker. Oh, I agree. Phenomenal filmmaker. I agree. So, and he's he's one of the. I, I just saw Hacksaw Ridge, uh, and we talked about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's as good as the trailers look. Just you know, not to go off on a, on a tangent, but this movie, you know, it it it's it it's so good. <laughs> it's a great film. <laughs> I agree. What's your number? I'm giving it a nine. Okay. It's not. It doesn't. It's not groundbreaking. But mm-hmm. what what's what's equally as uh, impressive is the acting, the relationships, the character developments, the uh, the dramatic scenes were on par with the effects. So, and that's that's what pushes it to a nine. Again, it's not. It's not. You know, game changing. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was very dramatic when it had to be. There yeah. were a lot of scenes that were very dramatic and suspenseful, so I'm giving it a nine. Nine, very nice. And whether it won an award or not, I mean, I couldn't tell you. I mean, we prepped the show in 20 minutes anyway, so right. it's kind of like don't really have a whole lot to dig into and in time to, sir. Right, right. But, but yeah, a nine for sure. Um, my third film is uh, it's one of of many in a series of films um, mm. from 2007. Uh, was directed by David Yates. Um, it is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, why I picked this one out of all of them, um, this was really when uh, Daniel, Emma, and Rupert were um, stepping into the uh, uh, light of, of being the adults and to where things kind of turned uh, uh, even darker in the storyline. And... There was some, you know, he had always felt lost, but he really felt lost in this one. Um, of course, it, you know, it had Daniel Ratcliffe, uh, Emma Watson, Rupert Grant, uh, Brendan Gleeson. I mean, come on. That's, that's, a, right. that's, that's a name of names. Michael Gambone is Albus Dumbledore. That's fantastic. Right. And then Gary Oldman. I mean, Gary Oldman, one of my 
absolute favorite actors ever to walk the face of this planet. And uh, to lose him as Sirius Black in that, just when it looked like there was a glimmer of hope and normalcy uh, to come in uh, Harry's life, it, it, it really strikes home and it, it gives you all the feels. It gives you the fun. It gives you the, the, the magic. It gives you the drama and right. the heartache. And uh, I think this one really, really did a great job of setting the tone for um, Half Blood Prince and Deathly Hollows. So, absolutely, right, absolutely. So, and it's a nine, easy for me. What in the series? What which one was this? Was this the third or fourth? Or this do you know? was the sixth. The sixth. Okay. Yep. How, how many movies are there? Eight. Well, th- there's seven. Well, no, I'm sorry. There's, Part. There's but... eight. There's yeah. There's um. Okay. There is. Let me do it here. Sorcerer's Stone. Yep. Half. Uh, la, 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 la. It's not the Goblet of Fire. Uh, no, no. The Goblet of Fire was further down the line, and I can't <laughs> believe I'm screwing this up. Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets. Yeah, Chamber. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, I believe it was. Um, and people here are like, they're like, I'm going to shoot you. I can't believe you can't think of the names of these. Uh, Prisoner of Ask, uh, no. Ask Man. Yeah, I guess it was Prisoner of Azkaban. Goblet yeah. of Fire. This was five. Oh, this was five, not six. My bad. People are like, no, you're wrong. Uh, uh, Order of the Phoenix and Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hollows. And Deathly Hollows, the only reason I got so screwed up is because they put Deathly Hollows into two movies and that screwed right. me up. So yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I corrected myself. Okay, I corrected it. I gotta go. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The the only reason I was asking is because it seemed you know the first two or maybe three of that franchise it seemed you know more childlike, but then there was mm-hmm. a turn, and that may have been when uh, was it Christopher Columbus took over. It seemed like when when, when it was Christopher well, Columbus, Christopher right? Columbus started them out. And that's when they had more of the fun kid feel. And then when David Yates stepped in, David Yates. It's, that's is, a, is when, when they that's started right. to take a more uh, uh, serious adolescent, uh, uh, young adult turn. Uh, right. That, uh, J.K. had written into the story. And they always had kind of a, a dark hint to them, of course. And, right. uh, and uh, of course, in this, uh, as you'll know in Order of the Phoenix, uh, Ralph Fiennes, of course, is... Absolutely, always a phenomenal actor, uh, as and especially as Voldemort, Tom Riddle. So, had to right. give props to everybody there. Don't get yeah. mad, Potter fans. I fixed it. I I got my I got my story straight. As as a franchise, Potter's going to go down as one of the best of all time, especially for that generation. I mean, you you, yeah. you as far as casting goes, it's right out there with Lord yeah. of the Rings. You and know, next, as far as perfect. Yeah, next Friday, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Yes, it does. Check it I'm out. very. I'm looking forward to that one. Yes, I am looking forward we, to that. We one. should hopefully have a review on that. <clears throat> okay, my third film is the. This is bordering on a warm blanket because it's 20 years ago. Oh. oh. Uh, I don't know how well this holds up now, but it's still a, it's still a clutch. It's a definition of clutch for me. Okay. Is a 1996 film called The Ghost in the Darkness. Ah, uh-huh. little Val Kilmer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's about two lions, essentially, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to explain what this, what this film's about, but, uh, there's a, there's a Val Kilmer, he's pretty much taken on two lions with Michael Douglas, and, uh, it's epic in Africa, and, uh, yeah. Phenomenal it's, cast. It's, good, it's a good film, yeah. you should watch it. <laughs> Beautifully shot, too. A lot of films yeah, it are, is. A lot of films just do not have the feel that some of those 90s films had like that. It is. It's textbook 90s. And mm-hmm. in some ways, when you think of 90s, it's a bittersweet because in some parts they're really, really cheesy, like mm-hmm. the 90s. Mm-hmm. But in some parts they're like right on. So, I mean, this was right in the middle of the, of the 90s, essentially. It was 1996. This was around, I think, the Independence Day uh, era. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, it, it was all practical. So that's, the, that's yep. the other thing that's cool about it. I mean, they yep. had two real lions. It was based on a real story. There were two lions in Africa, and they showed that at the end of credits. Um, and they were they were man eaters, man. That's the thing. Like they are legends. They they're they're put in the museum in Africa. So I mean, it's, it's a solid film. I mean, suspenseful. Indeed. I what? don't know if I I don't know if I give it an eight just because I'd probably mm-hmm. give it like a seven point seven five. Okay. 
Okay, getting technical on me. Getting technical on me. Yeah. But I, I follow mean, you. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. I, I smell what you're stepping in. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, good movie. Good clutch. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to the 90s on my next one. It's a 1997 film by a director a lot of people won't have ever heard of, is uh, Dwight Little. Um, it had Wesley Snipes, Dennis Leary, and Diane Lane in uh, Murder at 1600. Now, let me get ready here. For all of you that have not seen this film, <coughs> Muse, uh, yeah. what happens here is there's there's essentially a murder at the White House. And uh, the Secret Service, um, of course, usually investigates all this stuff, but they brought in a DC cop, Wesley Snipes, who is a homicide cop. And he starts to work the case. The Secret Service is also working the case. And Wesley Snipes comes to find out that there's, there's a cover-up or something going on here. Well, Dennis Leary is a detective with him. And Diane Lane is a Secret Service agent that becomes his liaison to the White House. And pretty much it's it's a kind of classic uh, mystery, whodunit, drama, but very serious, very noir feel to it. Right. Um, great action from Wesley Snipes. A good story. Diane Lane, absolutely gorgeous and, and ass-kicking in that movie. Uh, showed right. she had the chops to, to do the action and... Uh, to act, and then Dennis Leary. This was a, uh, this was kind of a break from him from uh, all the comedy stuff into something a little more serious. And he played the comic relief in it, but uh, in all, I I I, en I enjoyed him in it. Uh, this movie's not groundbreaking by any means or anything like that. I I would give you uh, I give you a seven point five to eight, maybe it's seven point five really on it. It doesn't quite hit the eight mark. It's a good movie, not a great right. movie. But uh, this was the day in the age of Wesley Snipes, so check it out if you haven't. Murder at sixteen hundred. Right. Okay. It's when he wasn't paying taxes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Oh, Wesley. Okay. My fourth film is the classic. It's also a warm blanket. Mm -hmm. The nineteen ninety two release of a film called The Last of the Mohicans. Oh, yes, sir. So, nice. you know, I mean, directed by Michael Mann, he's one of my favorite directors of all time. He's mm -hmm. directed, you know, Collateral, Miami Vice. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 DDL is the lead. Um, you can't go wrong with that. He well, plays Daniel an Indian. Day again. Daniel Day. So, I mean, yes, there's sir. a lot of, there's a lot of, one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in my life. That was. Oh, yeah. That was a gorgeous soundtrack. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the the fact that you didn't recognize that earlier shows that I was seeing it pretty terribly. Yeah, you but, were. Uh, it was awful. Anyways, you'll see that in the outtakes. <clears throat> Maybe uh, it's yes. a great film. <laughs> it's a it's a great film. Solid, solid film. Back mm -hmm. in the uh, you know the good old days of discovering America, still the French and Indian Wars. Uh, it was brutally honest for that time, especially in the '90s. I think that's probably what attracted DDL to it. Yeah, um, and that's that's signature Michael Mann. I mean. He, it, this was this was at the beginning of him breaking into the mainstream. He had, uh, you know, he had done some in the in the eighties, especially Manhunter, which is a cult classic. Uh, that was the original uh, Red Dragon, Michael Mann. Yeah. So that's his that's his mo. Michael Mann's mo is brutally honest. He he doesn't turn away from violence when it's necessary, anything like that. And uh, beautifully shot, beautifully honest, beautifully acted, epic, epic score. All around solid. I'm giving it an 8.5. Just an 8.5? Well, yes. I'd have to disagree with you on there. I think that's easily a 9, uh, but, uh, but a fantastic film nonetheless. A, a clutch indeed, and uh, for some, absolutely a warm blanket. Well, the thing is, I haven't seen this. The, the, I've only seen it maybe twice, and both of those times were like in history class, and those were like in eighth grade. So if I if I went back and watched it now, uh, you know, I, I I could bump it up, but uh, I don't I don't want to overplay the hand. So okay. you're probably right. You're probably you're probably right. It probably deserves a, a nine. But uh, hey, you know that's why we talk about it. So we can rewatch it. It's DDL. It is DDL. Yeah, this was this was really before he was DDL. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't really DDL at this point. I mean, he was, 
but we didn't we didn't refer to him as DDL. He wasn't like, you know, os- multiple Oscar winning DDL at this point. So. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. My next film is a uh, 2011 film. It is what I feel somewhat underrated. It's not an amazing or fantastic film. It didn't break ground. It didn't break the mold. But I like that it was in a time to where they were turning fairy tales into a more serious story. And uh, Catherine uh, Hardwick um, directed the movie. And uh, it stars uh, Amanda Seyfried, Gary Oldman again. Of course, Mm -hmm. Gary Oldman. i got to love me some Gary Oldman. Uh, Billy Burke from uh, you Twilight and uh, Shiloh Fernandez it is uh, Red Riding Hood and I don't know how many of you have all actually sat down and taken the time to watch this it gave a more darker adult feel to Red Riding Hood this was uh, around the time of when Snow White and the Huntsman uh, was out and people were thinking of well you know, it had success. Let's take a chance and try this and make this a little more um, serious. Uh, I, I, I like how it was shot, um, especially the village. It was always at night, misty, uh, foggy, very ominous. Um, just an all-around solid film. Uh, had a good story, good premise. Uh, had a little bit of a twist in it of kind of who is the wolf. And uh, I think that was well played, uh, especially for something coming from a nursery rhyme to build it into that. It won't change your life, but it'll help kill some time. And, and that's really ultimately what a clutch is. is right. I can tell you right now, I don't have a whole lot on. I'm going through the DVR, and yeah, I have this DVR, and I'm just like, oh, I'll put this on, okay. And, you know, I'm not going to say I sit there and watch the whole thing, like, fixated, but I'll, you know, I'll watch it, get up, do a few things, sit back down and watch it, and right. it'll keep me entertained. and there you have a clutch. It's uh, it's, right. it, the movie's a seven. That's a good definition of a clutch. That's a that's a great definition of a clutch. So I'm curious. I saw the marketing and the trailers for it, and if I remember, I, I wasn't really impressed. I think it was around the time that you know Twilight was still pretty big or whatever. Yeah. So I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, what did the, I was curious? What did the wolf like? Because I don't re- I don't remember them ever showing what 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 did the wolf actually look like? Was it like a CGI wolf? Yes. Or okay. All right. I remember the color looks pretty cool in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, it looked really, you know, vivid and bright. But uh, I just, I just wasn't feeling it. But maybe I'll check it out now after that little review. Oh, there you go. That's why I'm here. <coughs> Tomorrow we'll okay. do shapes. And boom goes the dynamite. My fifth film uh, <laughs> is a. Uh, I don't have to. It's one of those where you don't have to say a lot about it. <laughs> you always have one. <laughs> I Just like wait it. till you hear it. Just wait I till like you hear it. it. I like it. Okay, keep going. It is the 2000 release of a Ridley Scott film called Gladiator. Ah. That is a clutch, clutch film, if there ever was one. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just kidding, uh, but you know what I'm—you know what I'm trying to say, right? Oh uh, yeah, you just don't have to say much. It's Gladiator. Russell so, Crowe, man, come on. That's the thing. Joaquin uh, Phoenix. Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe, Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, these were at the peak. This was them at their peak. Agreed. I mean, it, it, it was nominated for 10 Academy Awards. Um, it was a huge blockbuster, huge critical reception. Mm-hmm. It stands the test of time. Mm-hmm. Classic story. This is my favorite Swords and Sandals movie of all time. Swords and Sandals. So, uh, you know, and, and it was groundbreaking in a lot of ways, especially with the CGI back then in 2000, mm-hmm. you know, with the with the rebuilding of the Coliseum, um, what they did with, like, inside the actual Coliseum itself. How exciting was that opening battle? How gritty was it? How, how awesome was Russell Crowe's portrayal of Maximus? I mean, how emotional was it? The soundtrack... Hans Zimmer was fantastic. Zimmer's the man. It was epic, yet it had small moments too. So, like as epic as it was with like chariot fights, uh, you know, fighting in the Colosseum, you you have little moments like when he's walking through the wheat field, or like when he sees that bird at the beginning, you get that little smile, and then he's remembered, oh man, I'm about to have to fight. So you see his face turn from a smile to like serious, you know, things are about to go down. <laughs> when he when he when he sees that his family had been crucified and hung, 
I mean, how iconic is that scene? Like for real, no joking around. That was that was hard to watch. Yeah. That was like it was hard to watch. And at the end, what a champion. What a freaking champion, man. That's the thing. This is it's a ten for sure. One of my favorite top ten favorite movies of all time. Even though you don't have to say a lot about it, I feel like I just talked a lot about it. So uh <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, that's why we're that's what we're doing this for. What's but, your uh, number? It's a ten. It I mean, is. It is a that's ten. A th- that's a thing. Absolutely. That's a thing. Well played. You know, you don't have to justify that ten. It's a ten. Get over it. That's one of those other ones. Just you know, we 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 both had them to where like if someone disagrees with that, we're like, well, stay subscribed. But I mean, adios, my friend. That's the thing. So <laughs> it is what it is, right? It is. It is. You're wrong and sorry. Right. Oh, agreed. Agreed. Great film. Um, I've got another one from the era of the 2000s. This is 2010. Um, it's a little film that was directed by a pair of brothers, the Hughes brothers, uh, Denzel Washington, Mia Kunis, and Gary Oldman in The Book of Eli. Now, this is not only a clutch film, but it's, it's, a, it's a great film. Uh, it kind of came in, you know, at, at first kind of came in under the radar until the trailers hit, and everybody was like, whoa, what is this? Right. Um, how much ass was just destroyed yeah. by Denzel Washington? How many people would have loved or still would love to be able to be that badass? And the whole fact of the matter is, he, you know, he's blind. A lot of people don't understand in this. He's blind. Right, and still, he can do all this, and he's doing this to protect the Bible. Right now, little do they know that the Bible is in Braille. Right, uh, Mia Kunis, uh, you know, played a good supporting role at the end. Took the helm, uh, picking up where Denzel left off, and Gary Oldman. He hadn't played a bad guy in a while, and man, it was good to see him back as a bad guy. Just, He's so good. just, just awesome. Yeah. And and this guy, like, like, like we've said about many other actors, he is a shapeshifter among statues. It, it, that's all there is to it. He can fit into a role. He can dive. He can dive into it. He can fill it with everything that he is. And whether or not you've kind of seen him do something similar to this it's not that and it's always new and it's always fresh and it's gary oldman I mean, gary oldman is, is synonymous in my mind almost if you say ddl i mean yeah those, those, that's not, that's those guys are badasses he's close man but he's the, close but this the, the story was fantastic the the movie yes. the way it was shot the filtering yep. uh just the music the, the music, music was absolutely yeah. you, you felt like you were every bit in that post-apocalyptic world as they yep. were at the time. Uh, never once did you feel detached. Did you feel that anything took away from the show, that there was any lulls or down moments? It was always on point, going, moving to the next scene, high energy, even when it was taking a break. You, you stayed prepared. And, uh, you know, they can't, they can't make... You know, you just can't make another movie like this. It's a very original story, and uh, I, f- I feel the Hughes brothers did a fantastic job with it. So, uh, in-, in that very right mind, I-, I at least give it a nine point five. Yeah, I mean, that was a- that was a great description. <clears throat> it was an original story, but it was in a it was in a well known genre that would be post apocalyptic. Yes. yes, and the number one thing, regardless of. You know, the music was great. Denzel, as soon as this came out, this became a classic Denzel film. Altman, of course, was great. Mila Kunis was good. The number one thing, and you, you already talked about it, was how smart the storytelling was. So the fact that he's blind was a shock at the end. So that was how they, you know, how they gave away that, as well as the fact that it was in Braille. Those were also... And then that's one of those... It was smart because as soon as you saw that, what did you want to do? You wanted to immediately go back and watch it again and be like... Okay, now I see, and there were little breadcrumbs, and that's yep. that's the thing. As action-packed as post-apocalyptic, 
you could say it was a suspense thriller, possibly even psychological. That's what psychological thrillers do. I mean, it's a great film. As soon as this came out, it was a classic. It was an instant classic. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I agree. And how cool was his machete? It wasn't a oh. normal machete. It had those little circles engraved in it that you could, you know, put them on your hand and, like, hit someone with it if you wanted to. He had that... <laughs> He had that signature iPod, uh, the, the the old school iPod that he still mm-hmm. found a way to like mm-hmm. charge after 30 years. He would take baths using, and that's the other cool thing about it. That's a great choice. As epic as it was, my favorite parts are like at the very beginning when it shows him, you know, he's walking, he's doing, I mean, he was. It, it was a biblical story in and yes. of itself. Yes, it was. Hence the name, Book of Eli, right? Yep. So it had those quiet moments. I mean, when he's listening to his music and he's bathing himself with like a little hand sanitizer wipe i mean it was sad tragic emotional gritty very gritty very gritty. that's a great film man that's a great film indeed good job thank good you good job sir. thank you thank you and that's the list i know it's like it, we built so far up and then we're just like yeah that's it i feel i feel good about it i think we both yeah. had great films tonight uh, oh yeah. yeah yeah given that check us out on facebook Three Geeks Flicks spelled out the letters that spell out three. I kind of almost messed it up. Geeks and Flicks. Flicks is spelled F-L-I-X. If you don't like Facebook, we're on Twitter. It's at the number three. Geeks Flicks, F-L-I-X. Follow us there. Holler at us. Troll us. We still got our troll. I noticed the thumbs down. Love you. Thank you for the view we got out of that. Always, always enjoy. Uh, And... You know, stay in contact, get involved. We, a lot of people are kind of timid, too timid to holler at us. Come on, give us a shout out. We want to get to know you, see what you think, know what you feel about a certain movie, a review, a warm blanket, or anything. And we'll have you on a Geek Speak, which of course is on YouTube. Hey, you never know. It could be you. Just got to take that chance. <laughs> got to make that call, write that message. No, you really want to? Come on! I'm waiting. And I'm not going any higher. It's been a while since I've done that. I'm a little rusty. Bravo. Yeah, Very good. You. Thank you. Those octaves get tough on an old man these days. It sounds like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, but other than that, folks, I want to say appreciate y'all sticking around. And stay tuned to the glow of those monitors because we're going to catch you next time. Good night. Make sure I edit that. Oh, are you recording right now? I'm always recording. I'm going to, I'm going to sing, or I'm going to hum the uh, score to one of mine. Let's see if you can get it. Ready? Okay. Just for fun. Let's see what happens. Ready? Ready. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. <laughs> I don't know if it's I just can't think of it or your singing is just that bad. It's probably it's probably the first one because my singing is beautiful. So, f- you Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I'm going to say F you from now on, I'm going to throw in a Twilight after this. <laughs> we, we really need to start making a list. It's yeah. getting hard. Yeah. It, that's what she said. It is getting hard. Yeah, for sure. All right. Man, that's scary how you just rolled with that. Yeah, what? get get settled because you're kind of... It, it gets pixelated when it moves. Mitchell, that's what she said. Try it again. No. Go back to the light. What is this, Poltergeist? Aziz Light. There, and if you just keep the keep the phone still, you're fine. Alright, is it, is it, is it This is now? not a born movie, okay? We don't need Shake King. <laughs> I can make you go away. <clears throat> All I have to do is take my shirt off. Ready when you are, dear. Deer. Bambi. Bambi. 
What was Bambi's dad name? Okay, here's a good verses for you. Where Bambi's the hell is this all going? <laughs> yeah. Bambi's dad versus, and he had a badass name too. I, I'm gonna look that up because his name was Legend. His name wasn't Legend, but it was the stuff of Legend. <laughs> you'll you'll see what I'm getting at. His name could be King <laughs> for all I care. Wait, hang on. His name was called. His name was Robert Polson. Yeah. <laughs> what the f are we talking about? Anyways, let's do this. <laughs> Where did you go? Yeah. <clears throat> so we're doing clutch, right? Yep. I just make it sure. Because <laughs> we wound up like jumping into a versus for a second. Okay, the Green Ranger from Power Rangers versus Blade in a sword fight. The Green Ranger, Blade. <laughs> so, is there any uh, any storage rooms there, Justin? No, but you know what? I've been wondering why I felt uncomfortable for the past week, and that's because I don't know where I'm going to hide the bodies. So, <laughs> we try. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go for a little stroll around the apartment. See what happens. <laughs> There's a lot of strangers around looking at me. What's up, girl? <laughs> What's up? All right. All right. You sleep tight. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> That wasn't a creepy at all, but, uh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. All okay. Right. Hey, okay. guess guess what? What?